people find out that I'm a pilot, sometimes they'll say something like, there's a guy who lives down the street from me who's building an airplane in his garage. Is that crazy or what? And I'll say, no, I don't think that's crazy at all. I'm building an airplane, and I know lots of people who have built airplanes. In fact, my father built his own airplane. And on July 25, 2010, he flew across the entire United States nonstop to set an aviation world record for an aircraft of its class. He was 82 years old when he set the record, and the flight was the culmination of a dream he'd had since his childhood in the 1930s. He designed his record-setting airplane, the E-1, in 1960 while finishing his degree in aeronautical engineering at Texas A&M. But the dream was delayed through both procrastination and life events, such as military service in Vietnam and his family. My mother was a pilot herself. We had a family airplane named Charlie, and yes, there really was a propeller under the bed in my parents' bedroom. Finally, in July 2005, the E-1 made its first flight. But before it would set any records, there were a few bugs to work out, like shortening the distance to land. My father's dream would not have been possible had it not been for a small tribe of aircraft enthusiasts in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s who fought both state and federal governments for the right of amateurs to design and build their own airplanes. From early designs serialized in magazines to the annual Oshkosh fly-in where you can see hundreds of home-built aircraft on display, the propeller under the bed offers my personal take on the history of building something in your garage that you can safely and legally fly, as well as how the home-built aircraft movement has contributed to aviation and innovation in America.